This is a crack of dawn show with myself, Kimana Hidal, as your host, and by my side, Brenna Hube Makandi says yes, truly. <laughs> so yesterday we got it wrong, right? We were telling everybody it's Tuesday. <laughs> You didn't even correct that. Yeah, no, nobody did. What's wrong with you? And, uh, Tuesday, 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 Tuesday. Tuesday. <laughs> and Brenna goes on radio after the, the TV show and says, everybody, it's Tuesday, 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 Tuesday. <laughs> it's Tuesday, Tuesday. Okay. Yesterday was Wednesday. Hey. We went through an entire two shows saying it's Tuesday. So anyway, Ooh. happy Pusa Thursday, everybody. Yay. Bye. Okay, so, so we're getting towards uh, the end of October. Yes, it is October, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost time for Christmas. It's gonna be yes. Christmas now, though. Yeah. You went Christmas shopping? Mm -mm. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to the Black Friday. Black Friday. Mm. Uh, yeah. At least you got money to go spend. I'm, uh, mm, I'm gonna buy you uh? with your new things. Uh -uh. It's just I'm, like. You know, like big TVs and everything. Yeah, no, just clothes. Things that you can get half yeah, price. Yeah, you can get half price. <laughs> 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 All right, very good morning to everybody who is watching. If you want to interact with us in the studio today, you can do so with the contact details at the bottom right of your yes. screen. <laughs> <laughs> bo, 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 bo. Yes. All right, so we've got uh, Dean Wilson coming in on Facebook as always. Uh, biggest fan, Attenville TV's biggest fan. Dean yes. Wilson comes in. Good morning, Kimera and Brenna. Morning, Dean. <laughs> when I had August symptoms, oh, and then what did I have? Because we both were like, it's Tuesday. <laughs> we didn't notice. <laughs> I don't know what happened. What happened? I know we, we skipped a day. I wasn't aware. Yeah. Yeah. Two days. Yes. Hey, something happened. It was really bad, eh? Was it? I'm 34, you 39. What's wrong? <laughs> we still had a For me, I, I can say it's old age catching up. Uh -uh. Not at 39. Mm. You don't become seen at like 39. It's too early. Maybe it can happen. Uh-uh. There's nothing wrong with us. But you know, this happens to a lot of people. Even when I was in school, there was a time where I mixed up the dates. And I was writing the wrong date down. Uh -huh. I, got, I got a hiding with the ruler. <laughs> ruler is so, it's, it's so painful. I know. The ruler. They hit on you. Yes. Yeah. Right. That, that part. Like, yeah. To get this. Yeah, yeah, on the desk. And not a normal ruler, it was a skill one from the, from the board. Yes, that yeah, one. the big one. Mm. I mm -hmm. still can catch it with that one. Hey! I won't mention the teacher's name because you know. <laughs> <laughs> up, to, up to date, I still don't like you. <laughs> I, I hate the way she used to look at me. Okay. Like, I, I swear I was like her target. I Something felt, was wrong somewhere I with felt you. That way. With you. I think so. You're a problem, child. No, I wasn't in class. Yes, wow. maybe you were. I was a good child. In class. Out of class, so that's the story. <laughs> <laughs> So we've got lots of love coming in on Facebook. We see lots of movement, but as you go along with the show, we will put your message out there. So if you want to interact with us, you know how to do so. Don't forget, we have to mention this before we go on with the show. We are Attenville TV, and we're also a radio station, Attenville FM, and we are a non-profit company. Non-profit. Proudly. Non-profit. <laughs> okay, so uh, why we're mentioning this too is that we are solely survive of our adverts and our sponsorships. Mm -hmm. So we're all about giving back, and the reason why this this whole project was created was to give back to the community. community. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and the less fortunate. Mm -hmm. All right, so it's not necessarily only Attenville, as you know, there's Attenville FM and Attenville TV. No, uh, it's, it's about giving back mm -hmm. where we can. Yeah. Uh, we, we, yes, we do our feeding schemes. We would, we used to join the um, Love Also Will Sci Center mm -hmm. with our feedings. And uh, we were a part of their project initially. So we'd like to open up our own with our giving back. Not only food. Let's open up development centers together. and. Yes. Um, Teach. Yeah. Educate for free. Yes. Why not? Yeah. Not everybody is blessed to have a mom and dad like I did no, or yeah. like she did. Yeah, yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. we were educated by our parents and not everyone has that. So yes. we would like to open up our own development centers mm -hmm. and we'd like to educate for free. Whether yeah. it's teaching music for free, mm -hmm. whether it's dancing, yes. whether it's exercise, yoga, whether it's... <laughs> <laughs> Well, anyway, that's the plan. <laughs> now, how we plan on doing this, yes, the, the, the business plan is in play. Yes. It's there. Yeah. The thing is, everything needs funding. Yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, if you want to be a part of this and you want to do your God's work through our work, 
why not join us? Yeah. Drop us an email on yes. mail at activefm.co.za. Now, also, if you don't want to only just give financial uh, stability or any kind of income, it doesn't have to be finance. No. It can be anything from clothes yes. to uh, canned foods to anything, mm -hmm. anything, just yeah. to help uplift. Uh, I always complain that I don't have a proper camera uh, to have my <laughs> close up. <laughs> So if you want to help us so that you can, <laughs> I'd like to. I'd, I'd, I'd like to have a proper camera. Yeah, yeah. D ninety to be specific. <laughs> I like that. No, I was, yes. I was researching yes. cameras. Quality, and it's the quality yes. and what it can do. Yes, mm, especially with streaming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. Now, but anyways, guys, uh, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We can. Uh, I know why you tuned in. Uh, it, it did. It was advertised, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, you guys know that my name is Japanese. <laughs> Did you know? Yes. Chimera. Yes, it's Japanese. It's Japanese. Yes. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. Okay, but before we go on and before I tell you what it means, uh, welcome back straight after this commercial break. Atom Bull TV! Yeah. This is the Cracker Down Show with myself, Kimara Hirolo, as your host. By my side, Brenna Hube, my candidate. Yes, truly. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, you you believe in the different myths. Mm -hmm. You do? Yes, I do. But it's a myth. Hence the word myth. But I believe it's 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 still B. It's there. Yes. It's not there. Nuh-uh. The V. <laughs> Reality, <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Pete Wilson, do you believe in, in, in myths? Mm. Such a myth. Mm. Mm. All myths. Let us know. Okay, so uh, before we cut to commercial, I was telling you guys um, that uh, Chimera, not my full name, not my, not my surname, Chimera is Japanese and it means princess. Wow. I need a crown. Your royalty. Give me your hair. <laughs> right. So, Your royalty. No. Yes, princess. In, re in reality, I'm not. <laughs> I'm daddy's princess. Yes. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So there are myths out there. There's different things that you should need to learn and know about different cultures. You get different types of mythology. You get, you know, you get South African myths, <laughs> Japanese myths. Chinese myths, mm -hmm. I don't know, different types of myths. Yeah. Okay, so obviously um, we've done a little research for you guys and there are reasons why there is... Okay, I, I'm sure you guys saw the advert about a Japanese mythology, mm -hmm. right? You saw that the show was going to be about Japanese mythology. Dean Wilson, tell us what is your take on the Japanese mythology. Please be careful with the names that you send us. <laughs> Pronunciation <laughs> is a bit of a problem with being <laughs> the Japanese culture. <laughs> All right. Okay, so there is Japanese mythology. You, what can you tell us about it? Uh, I believe it's 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 still there, and all those deities and gods. Mm. Yes. Okay. And their powers and everything. Okay, so this is a, uh, the story that we have today is specifically about Amaterasu. How do you say it? Amaterasu. Amaterasu. <laughs> if I can say it, Amaterasu. Amaterasu. Right? Please excuse the the pronunciation of the names. Okay, so there's different types of gods that we've, we've seen mm -hmm. and researched, and we, we, we want to teach about different cultures as we go along with our shows. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got um, uh, lots of people that are coming in on Facebook this morning. I'd like to say thank you for joining us. Yes. And uh, if you want to interact with us in studio today, please do so with the contact details, which you'll find at the bottom right of your screen. Yes, right there. Yes. I can see it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so we've got Dean Wilson coming in saying Japanese mythology is a collection of traditional stories, folk tales, and beliefs that emerged in the islands of the Japanese, um, uh, well, uh, archipelago. 
Am I saying it correctly? Mm -hmm. Is the word pronounced correctly? Salago. <laughs> okay. So guys, uh, Shinto and Buddhist traditions are the cornerstones of Japanese mythology. So they got two important different sources, okay? The mm -hmm. Japanese myths, as they are recognized today, mm -hmm. and uh, the Kojiki. Uh, and the, uh, what, how do you pronounce this? The Nihon Shoki. I hope I'm saying this correctly. Yes. So these are, well, it, to, to me, it is a, a, a collection of traditional stories. Mm -hmm. But you are right, Dee. Thank you so much for that. And Thank you, Dee. <laughs> Japanese culture is quite close to the Hindu culture. Oh. This is what freaks me out. It's quite close. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you freaked out? No, it's like, it, it's, everything is similar, mm -hmm. just the names are different and the language. Mm -hmm. But everything tradition and everything is similar. It seems the same to me. Wow. It's shockingly insane. I'm like, why don't they just join? You know, everything you do when you pray, every, everything with the joint is stronger. Yes. So why don't they just join? You join the you, you own the name, Japanese name. So mm. already, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay, so uh, we've got Bungani and Kosi coming in on Facebook this morning. He says, good morning to all Attenville TV viewers and our beautiful presenters. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank oh, my God. All right. Bungani, do you have bad taste in women? Just ask me. <laughs> Are we ugly? No, I'm not <gasps> saying that. Today I'm having a bad day. I'm hurt. <laughs> you hurt. <laughs> you shouldn't be hurt by me. You should know me by now. I can't hurt you. I just speak... You know, okay, I just get smacked a lot for speaking freely. Mm -hmm. mm. But why why I get smacked if it's true, you know? <laughs> I don't know why. Okay, anyway. Okay, okay, so guys, um, now throughout history, um, I want to I wanna explain to you guys that there's also different things in, in Japanese mythology that throughout the years, did you know that night and day, according to Japanese mythology, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Here's the reason why. Right? There's, 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 uh, now, throughout history, ancient peoples and religions have often represented the sun and the moon as deities. Yes. Did you know they believe this? Do you believe this? Think I do. Uh, leaving the Christianity. Yeah, leave the Christianity out. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, I do believe it. Okay. Yes, I do believe in it. Okay, mm -hmm. so they are deities. Do you pray to them? Would you pray to them? They do. <laughs> they do. The yes, Japanese people. Yes, do. they do. So they pray to different parts of the world. Yes. It's like, like how we, uh, I do believe in the universe. Mm -hmm. hey, when mm -hmm. you say things out loud, it will give you exactly what you want or confess to. That's but true. It, but it also depends on how you say it. Mm -hmm. That's when you ask for something, be very specific <laughs> what you want, because you realize you're getting something that you asked for, but it's not the way you want it. And you're like, how did I put it out to the universe? How did I say it? You say, oh Lord. Mm. I'm single. I want a man. <laughs> what? The, where did that come from? <laughs> and you'll get a man. Okay. <laughs> Not the right one. Just a man. Yeah. You see. See. A see. Finger. You need it. Man. You need it to be specific. Yes. Lord, I need a nice, decent man that will never, ever cheat on me. Yes. <laughs> see. <laughs> a man that will love me for me. Not like you, <laughs> you didn't do that, did you? No, you forgot. <laughs> so, Lord, I want a man. I want a man. I want a man. I want a man. Do you know what you Do you know what you just done to yourself? Yeah. What did I do? <laughs> exactly what you're going through. <laughs> you see now? Okay. So, uh, jokes aside, guys. <laughs> jokes aside, <laughs> you cannot. You have to be specific when you're yeah. asking for something. I believe. Okay, I'm a God-fearing person. Don't get me wrong when I'm speaking that I'm, I'm, I don't believe in God. I do. No, no, no. It's just when I speak out loud, I feel no matter what culture you're from, yes. when you are giving something praise or worship yes. or power yeah. from your heart, it's going to come through. True. It's going to happen. Either way. And with it, when it, whether you chant on it or cry on it mm -hmm. every day, it's, mm -hmm. eventually, you're giving it power. Yeah. You're giving it belief. You're giving it strength. Yes, it's true. I believe it. So when you talk, I be careful. <laughs> this one, ask for a man and look what I bring. <laughs> it's like, whenever I wish someone a, 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 a happy anniversary on radio, <laughs> Brenna comes along and she's like, you are strong. Instead of just saying congratulations <laughs> on your special day, yeah. Brenna comes along with this attitude that you are strong, <laughs> which is not nice. I'm trying to get her out of that, that situation. Brenna's been through a lot this Ooh. year, guys. For those of you who don't know Brenna, mm -hmm. uh, her, her love side, her love life <laughs> went to <bit> south. <laughs> All right. 
Alright, so we've got love happening on Facebook this morning. Um, I got Dean Wilson coming in on Facebook saying Amaterasu is the highest deity in the Japanese mythology. Okay, so getting back to the mythology thing this morning, um, we got we got a little piece. We piece a, a like a nice video for you to learn about. Um, I nearly say Greek mythology, Japanese mythology. Uh, you're gonna see what it's about. But uh, before we get there, um, uh, please stay tuned. We'll come back straight after this commercial break. <coughs> Wanna be a star? For all your music needs, contact Rockstar B Productions South Africa. We offer music production, publishing, artist management, and digital distribution. For further information, contact 084 605 5466. And we're back if you're live. If you're live. We are like, we are, if you like, yes, we are. What's wrong with me? I'm getting my Tuesday, Tuesday symptoms. <laughs> <laughs> okay, welcome <laughs> back, y'all live with us on Attenville TV. Yeah, yeah. This is the Cracker Dawn Show with myself, Kimela Hidalal, as your host, by my side, Brenna Hoover, Maka DC. Yes, truly. All right. Mm. <laughs> All right, so uh, if you want to interact with us in studio today, if you just joined us and you're a little late, um, you can do so with the contact details that you'll find at the bottom right of your screen. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> I need to stop that bad habit. It's very irritating. You know when <laughs> when something is happening all the time, it grows on you. Yes, and it becomes a part of it. Yeah, same thing. When you want to say pom 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 pom, it feels weird. It does feel weird, but why does everyone do it? Big presenters. Talking about like in South Africa, talking about five FM, ninety four point seven, all of them. Pom 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 pom. Put them out. I'm like, can't they just make the sound with the the machine? You know, it, it, it makes more with the mouth. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. So we got uh, Dean Wilson coming in on Facebook saying, Brenna, maybe it's your August symptoms. You do have August symptoms. I think both of us have August symptoms. <laughs> For those of you who don't know what Dean Wilson's <laughs> talking about, August is a person that used to work here at Attenville FM, the radio station. And uh, every time you talk to him, he wouldn't realize what's going on around him. Like, you'll ask him, did, you, did it rain by you? He's, he'll say, no, it didn't. But it did. <laughs> and then there was a time where everybody in the staff was like, did you know August had a child? I don't think he did. <laughs> okay. So, anyway, shout out to August if you ever get to watch the show. Uh, not insulting you, honey, just having a good laugh out of your, your, your pain. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, so, uh, Bugnani coming in. Don't worry, Kim, because Brenna is is being specific. Mm. Why, why is Kim I didn't say that. Bongani said it. Why are you looking at me like that? I didn't do anything. <laughs> Okay, back to reality and back to the topic of conversation this morning. The Japanese mythology. Okay, so let's do this. Let's take a bit of a glimpse to see uh, uh, what the Japanese uh, mythology is like. And um, you can learn a bit of the culture as well in this mix. Have a look. At the beginning of everything, chaos took over the universe. It was then that, from a primordial mass, the gods created the sky and the earth. These divine spirits, noticing the world was empty, gave rise to two new deities. Their names were Izanagi and Izanami. The divine couple's mission was to fill the world and create everything that would exist in it. Izanagi and Izanami received a divine spear from the hands of the primordial Kami. This artifact was ornamented with precious jewels and possessed remarkable powers. Making use of this instrument, they went to the Celestial Bridge, where they created the sacred island of Onogoro. The two gods worked under the utmost harmony and fell in love due to the proximity. The goddess Izanami invited her husband to consummate the union and generate a noble offspring. Izanagi accepted the invitation. But from this union, deformed creatures were born given that the ritual of the union of the divine couple was distorted, because proposing was not the role of the female deity. The couple decided to unite again, 
but this time, Izanagi took the initiative and invited the goddess to conduct the ritual of the union. Izanagi and Izanami gave birth to a new generation of gods and soon created the other islands of the Japanese archipelago. But a tragedy struck the divine couple. Izanami was pregnant again, but something seemed wrong. Izanami passed away, giving birth to Kagusuchi, the god of fire. She had to leave for Yomi, the world of the dead. Her husband did not accept such a fate and left to bring her back from the underworld. This was an impure place, consumed by corruption and filled with oni and corrupt creatures. The god found his beloved wife in the darkness and wanted to bring her with him. But when Izanagi pointed the light to Izanami, he was horrified. The goddess was in an advanced process of decomposition. Her divine purity had been destroyed by rot. Izanami had fed on the fruits of the underworld and her bond with Yomi was unbreakable. Izanagi, horrified, repudiated Izanami. Furious, she ordered monsters to go after the god, and Izanagi ran away from the world of the dead. He blocked the exit of the underworld with a massive rock, holding Izanami forever in Yomi. Izanagi's visit to the world of the dead made him feel filthy, and he needed to be purified. The god began to take a ritualistic bath. During it, he gave birth to several deities and spiritual beings like Kami and Yokai. The god's eyes burned with sadness, and between the tears of Izanagi's left eye, Amaterasu emerged, the brightest divinity that ever existed. Her brightness illuminated everything around her. From the right eye of Izanagi, another remarkable deity emerged. His name was Tsukiyomi, who although was not as bright as his sister, had a charming luminosity. Finally, dripping from Izanami's nose, appeared the agitated and indomitable Susano. The creator god, contemplating his last three children, was proud, and he called them the Three Noble Children. Tsukiyomi and Amaterasu were quite close and were often seen together. During those moments, when looking at the sky, it was possible to see the sun and the moon shining together. There was no distinction between day and night. The glorious goddess Amaterasu was invited to a banquet by Ukemochi, the goddess of food. But Amaterasu could not attend. She asked his brother Tsukiyomi to represent her at the banquet. The lunar god encountered a table full of the most diverse foods. The goddess Ukemochi appeared from behind a rock with even more treats. Tsukiyomi wondered where these foods came from, given that, right after the goddess hid behind the rock with her empty tray, she quickly re-emerged on the other side with the tray full of food. Curious, the god decided to spy on what was happening behind the stone, and he was shocked. Ukemochi threw up the rice she was going to serve. From her ears, she grabbed vegetables and roots. Milk flowed from her nose, and unworthy holes also produced food. Tsukiyomi was disgusted and offended by that grotesque scene and proceeded to cut the food goddess with his sword. Her pieces were thrown from the sky, and the most diverse vegetables were born where they hit the ground. Amaterasu was furious to hear about the violence perpetrated by her brother while he was representing her. The goddess expelled her brother to the other side of the world. From this day on, they were hardly seen together in heaven. And so, where Tsukiyomi was, Amaterasu was not. It was now day and night. Izanagi considered that his mission to fill the world was accomplished at last. But before leaving for the high plane of heaven, he gave his daughter Amaterasu a beautiful necklace filled with mystical jewels. From that moment on, she would reign over the heavens during the day and illuminate the whole world.
Tsukuyomi would take over the night, and as a lunar deity, he would rule the night and the tides. The impetuous Susanoo received the domain of the seas and storms. The gods recognized how glorious the goddess Amaterasu was, acclaimed as the new lady of the heavenly plains. She stood above the other gods. But Susanoo was angered to see her sister named the most important deity. Unfazed by it, he started to foster several problems. He made rivers dry, and the green vegetation of the sacred mountains began to dry up and die. Izanagi noticed the chaos his son was creating, and asked why he was acting that way. Susanoo revealed how frustrated he was at not being given such an important role as his sister. He declared that he no longer wanted to be in this world. He preferred to leave for the kingdom of the dead and stay beside Izanami, his mother. Izanagi was enraged to hear that his son preferred to live in the unclean underworld. The god expelled his son and told him to never return. Before leaving, Susanoo wanted to make one last visit to his sister. In her heavenly abode, Amaterasu noticed the sound of thunder and an impending storm. She knew that such a thing could only be his impetuous brother. He probably wanted to take her place. Amaterasu tied her hair in two large bunches and assumed her battle position. Upon arriving, Susanoo was amazed by Amaterasu's imposing and powerful stance. Her sister questioned the reason for the visit, and Susanoo assured her that he had no bad intentions whatsoever. But Amaterasu didn't trust her brother. To prove that he spoke the truth and that his intentions were pure, Susanoo gave her his sword. The gods decided to creatively compete. Amaterasu broke Susanoo's sword into three pieces, and from these pieces, she created three female deities. Susanoo used Amaterasu's jewelry beads to create five male deities. The impetuous god cherished his victory against the great goddess, since he had created more deities. But the clever Amaterasu contested her brother's victory because he had created life from the goddess's jewels. Therefore, these five deities would be the sons of the luminous deity, and the three female deities born from Susanoo's sword would be the daughters of his brother. Therefore, she was the actual winner of the clash. Susanoo was outraged by her sister's interpretation and began to thrash the domains of the solar goddess. The stormy god did all sorts of mischief, destroying the sacred rice fields. He entered his sister's palace and made a huge mess. But the worst was yet to come. In Amaterasu's domains, there was a building in which the sacred weavers wove the gods' clothes and cloaks. Susano wanted to scare the weavers. He opened a hole in the roof of the weaver's room and made one of Amaterasu's sacred ponies fall from the sky. The weavers felt so scared that one of them ended up having an accident and dying. Amaterasu, when she saw her fields destroyed, her palace emptied, and even worse, having lost one of her beloved weavers, was taken by a massive wave of sadness. The luminous goddess gave up her tasks, entered a cave, and blocked the entrance with a huge stone. Night took hold of the skies, and sunlight was no more. Both the heavenly plain and the land of men were taken by darkness, and the first winter began. The other gods saw the world wither around them. The vegetation was no longer healthy. The animals began to perish, and evil spirits were on the loose. The deities knew that something needed to be done to get Amaterasu out of her cave. They tried to convince her, but she had made up her mind. The wise god Omoe Kane realized they couldn't get her out by persuasion, but they could by cunning nonetheless. A sacred mirror was devised by the great celestial blacksmith, and a party was arranged in front of the cave's entrance where Amaterasu was hiding. They planted Sasaki, the sacred 500 branch tree, right in front of the cave exit, and hung the beautiful mirror on it. From inside the cave, Amaterasu heard a cock crow. How could it be possible if the world was taken by darkness, she thought. Soon after, she heard drums. 
there seemed to be a party outside. The goddess was right. Several gods gathered and watched the goddess Ame no Uzume dance. The dancing goddess was attempting striptease, much to the gods' frenzy. They reacted with loud laughter. Amaterasu was captivated by curiosity and wondered how they could be so happy. She decided to open the entrance of the cave just a bit to spy what was happening. To her surprise, the gods had found a new goddess of light to worship. She looked so beautiful that Amaterasu decided to leave the cave to see her up close. When Amaterasu came out of her hiding, she brought the light back to the world. The darkness was pushed away, evil beings hid, and joy took over the world. The strong god, Ame no Tajikaro, pushed the stone back to its place, preventing the goddess from returning to the cave. At last, Amaterasu realized that the beautiful bright goddess was her own reflection. She took notice of how splendid and great she was. It wasn't right to deprive the world of her luminousness. The gods cherished the goddess's return, and the world was wrapped in joy. But these same gods didn't forget that Susanoo was the real culprit for that whole conundrum. As punishment, they cut off his beard and pulled out his nails. Finally, they threw him out of the god's house. Susanoo went down to earth near the river He in the Uzumo province. The stormy god was lonely, and he went down the river on two trunks, looking for someone in that vast world. On the riverbanks, he found an elderly couple alongside a beautiful maiden. They were deeply sad and cried profusely. Susano wanted to know the reason for such dismay. The old man explained that he once had eight daughters, but every year a massive dragon would appear and take one of his daughters as a tribute. Only one remained. The beast would not take long to return to take his last gem. The god was marveled by the beauty of the old man's daughter and promised to protect her. But he asked the hand of the beautiful young woman to be his wife. The girl's parents were deeply grateful and honored accepting Susanoo's request. The god had a huge challenge because he wouldn't face some random creature, but the powerful dragon Yamata no Orochi. This was a giant and powerful dragon with eight heads and eight tails. Even the powerful stormy god would be no match for the dragon if he tried to fight it. Susano did not feel intimidated by the challenge and came up with a strategy to defeat the beast. To protect her beloved, Susano transformed the beautiful Kushina Dahime into a comb and put it on his head to hold his hair. The earth trembled as the giant dragon emerged to claim his tribute. The beast shrieked and demanded his sacrifice. He then noticed that a peasant filled eight barrels with the pure sake. The peasant told the dragon that it was an offering to the glorious creature who always conquered everything he wanted. Flattered, Yamata no Orochi accepted the offering, and each of his heads consumed a barrel. The dragon got drunk with such a marvelous beverage and fell asleep. Taking advantage of the beast's vulnerability, Susano broke his disguise, drew his sword, and attacked the creature. When the beast awoke, one of its heads was already gone. In rage, the dragon tried to devour Susano. The stormy god dodged his attacks and struck back with lightning and sword blows. Susano was cutting the dragon's heads one after the other. Without any of his heads, the dragon was defeated, but his body was still fighting. Susano struck a powerful blow, hitting the dragon's tail, but his powerful sword got broken. Inside the monster's tail, there was hidden an invaluable sacred sword known as Kusanagi. Susano, acknowledging the artifact's massive value, knew exactly what to do with it. The god of the seas and storms went to meet Amaterasu. The god knelt before the sun goddess and offered her the glorious sword as an apology for every mischief he had caused. Amaterasu, already an unparalleled goddess, became even more splendid when she carried the famous Kusanagi sword. Susanoo left to meet Kushinada Hime, his new wife. 
They built a massive palace and had numerous and prosperous offspring. Amaterasu also had a glorious descent. Among them were the men who conquered Japan. They fought in the name of the sun. And with the strong brightness of the goddess on their backs, Amaterasu's descendants subdued their enemies. Jimu, Japan's first emperor, was a direct descendant of the sun goddess and was under her protection. The Yamato dynasty, founded by Jimu, would guide Japan to a story of glory, courage, and pride. Japanese mythology, everybody! I learned something new today. Mm -hmm. oh, don't fall asleep. Wake up. Wake up. Okay, we're learning about different types of cultures and different types of places yes. and different types of mythology. Mm -hmm. Well, as you know, this is Actonville TV and we yeah, yeah. we are going to showcase talent in a couple of minutes. Stay exactly where you are. We'll come back straight after this commercial break. Just joining us, you are live with us on Atom Bull TV. Yeah. This is the Crack and Dodge Show with myself, Kimura Hilo, as your host, by my side, Brenna Hoover and Mark and DC. Yes, truly. Now, as you know, at the end of every show, what we do? Showcase talent. That's it, baby. All right, all right. So, you all know who's the weekend. Hello. Mm -hmm. Hello. Hello. You know who the weekend is. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you guys know that song called Save Your Tears? Yes. Now today we have a little cover version showcasing talent that has never been seen before. And that's what we do here. We want to help people get exposed. Let's expose everyone that has talent right here. Mm. Now don't forget if you have talent and you want us to showcase you with over 1.6 million viewers a day. Woo! This is a daily basis thing, right? Yes. So all you have to do is drop us an email on mail at actonvillefm.co.za. Send, send us, a, a, drop us an email and we'll, we'll guide you how to send your, your, your content through and... And then you take it from there. Yes. All right. So today we have a, a acoustic cover version by James Cello. Save your tears. Check him out. I saw you dancing in a crowded room. You look so happy when I'm not with you. But then you saw me caught you by surprise. A single tear drop on and from your eye. That you fell apart But you walked past me Like I wasn't there And just pretending Like you didn't care Day. 
Express Show, where you can catch us live every single weekday, Monday through to Friday, on the Breakfast Express Show on Attenville FM. It's for everyone. <laughs> With myself, DJ Baby Girl, on the mic, and by my side will be DJ Brennan. Yes, truly. And we'll be keeping you company all the way up until 9 o'clock. Just don't forget, it is Central African time, so that is our Breakfast Express Show. Wherever you are in the world, you know what? Good e-morning. <laughs> <laughs> All right, for those of you who don't know how to get hold of Actonville FM, it's not on the dial. Uh, we are not FM yet, but we are an online station, so you can find us on uh, your Google Play or your App Store. Just download Actonville FM, press play, that Bob's your uncle. All right, we'll check you in a couple of minutes on the Breakfast Express. Show. For myself, Kimera Hidalal, and Brenda Hubeba, can be say bye-bye.